Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will show you how to use Avada Forms, our very own form builder. Avada Forms allows you to build all manner of forms for your website, from basic contact forms, right through to multi-step forms and forms with conditional logic, all using the familiarity and power of the Avada Builder. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. For this video, I've imported the podcast's pre-built website, and here on the Guests page, I have added an Avada form for potential guest contributors to fill out. It looks like this. OK, so now let's start from the start and see how I created this form and added it to the page here. To start building an Avada form, head to Avada Forms from the WordPress dashboard, or Forms Form Builder from the Avada dashboard. From this page, you can create your forms. I'll call my new form Guest Contributor and click on Create New Form. This takes you to whatever editor you have set in the Builder Options, found from the Avada dashboard at Options Builder Options. I have Avada Live set as the default, so it opens for me in that. OK, so now I'm ready to build a form. At this point you have two options. You can click on Avada Studio and start with one of the many pre-built forms available here, or you can build your own form from scratch. As you can see in Avada Studio, there are many different types of forms to import, from the simplest of sign-up forms, basic contact forms, and even a couple of multi-step forms. You can also just import them to see how they are constructed, but for this video, I will build one from scratch, so I will cancel out of that, and here I'll click on Add Container, and I'll just start with the container with two half columns. Now I'll click on the Add Element button to start adding my form elements. Note how it opens in the Form Elements tab. And here we can see all the form builder elements. I think I will start with a text field element. I'll give it a label of first name. And when I tab away, the field name auto populates. I think I'll make this as a required field. And I don't think I need any placeholder or tooltip for this. But I will add an icon here. I'll just search for person and choose this one. There are plenty of other options here, but for a simple name field, I think this will do. Check out the element docs for specific details on all options in each element. OK, the next thing I need is a last name field. I might just clone this one half column. I'll just change the field label to last name and the field name to last underscore name. Otherwise, everything else can stay the same. Now I have an empty half column underneath here, and this one will be good for the email field element. I'll give it a field label of email address, and again, just tab away and the name auto populates. I'll make this required as well, and again I won't add placeholder or tooltip text. I do want an icon again, so I'll search for email, and I think I'll choose this envelope here. OK, that one's good. I'll now add another half column and add a phone number field element. I'll set the label and name, make it required, and I'll just choose a different icon here. I'll search for mobile, and pick this one. OK, now under these I'll add another half column, and in this column I'm going to add a checkbox field element. I'll give it the label Podcast Categories and tab away. But then I'm going to come back and add a bit more to the label. This way the field name will be nice and short, and it won't have any disallowed characters in it. I'll make it required as well. Here with this element we have the options of All, Selection and None. I'll choose Selection, which then gives me a few more fields under that, where I can determine how many fields are required. I'll set the minimum required fields to 1 and leave the maximum on 0, which just means users have to pick at least one of these selections but can also pick multiple. Now this might seem like a lot of required fields so far, but this isn't just an ordinary contact form and I would require lots of details from potential contributors. So now I have to add my options. I'll make the first one Business and then add a few more. They will be Lifestyle, Design, and Avada. And under this, I will choose Floated as the field layout. Now I will be changing the background colour of these other fields later, and I'll do that with the Field Background Colour option in the Appearance tab. But my checkbox column won't be affected by that, as with that element, it's only the actual checkboxes that are form fields, and not the whole area. So here I will style this column a bit so they match. I'll just edit the column, go to the Background tab, and set that to colour 2. I'll also go to the Design tab and set 30 pixels top and bottom margin, and 15 pixels left and right padding. 
Below this I'm going to add a border size of one pixel all around and set the border color to this gray. And then a bit further down I'm going to add a border radius all around of six pixels to match the other fields. Okay, as another shortcut I'm now going to clone this column as I want another checkbox field element next to this as well and I want all the same styling. So now I just need to edit the element. First up I need to change the label to where did you hear about us. And this time I need to manually change the field name. I'll call it referral underscore source. I'm not going to have this one as required so I'll set that to none. And I'll change the options to website, Facebook, friend and other. Okay, so now I need a full width column. I'll add that and now I'll add an upload field element here. I'll give it a label of show us who you are, make it required and I'll add some more to this placeholder text. I'll just paste it in at the end here. I'll also add a tooltip for this one and we get the little question mark with the tooltip on hover. I'm happy with the file size limit of 2 megabytes, and I'm only going to allow the JPEG extension here, so I'll write .jpg here in the allowed extensions option. OK, nearly done. But I want to allow users to send me a message as well, of course, so under this I'll add the text area field element. I'll give it a label of message, make it required, and this time I think I will add some placeholder text. I'll add please tell us more about yourself. I don't need an icon for this field, but I do want it larger, so I will change the text area row value to 10 to encourage more information. Yeah, that looks good. Under this I will add the submit button element. I don't have to change anything here on the general tab, so I'll head straight to the design tab and change the button span to yes. And that's all I really have to do with this one. It's taking the default button styling from the website, and I'm happy with that. The last element I need to add to my form is the notice element. That's because on submission the confirmation option is going to be display message and when I choose that this is where it gets those messages from. As we can see when I add the element there are default messages already there but I will just adjust these messages a bit. OK now as to their colors they're coming from the global options. If we go to global options, Avada builder elements and alert we can see the colors are actually coming from the error colors and the success colors. So I think I'll quickly change the error message background to color 3 and remove the U adjustment. And for the success alert, I'll set color 6 as the background color and also remove that U adjustment there as well. Yeah, that will work. Now there are of course many elements we didn't use for this form, but that's the nature of forms. We have a range of elements for precisely the form you want to build. For example, I could add the recapture element to this form for more spam control, but for this element I will leave it as is. OK, so now we have completed our form, but we still need to configure it. It's time to head to the Form Options tab, which are like page options, but just for this form. The Settings tab has just the name of the form and the slug, and that's completely fine as is. If I go back and select the General tab, we can see it has an option for a member-only form, which I don't need here, and a Security Nonce method option. If you don't know about nonce, there is a link in the option description, but generally just leave it on the default option. So now let's head to the Submission tab. This is where we configure what happens when someone submits a form. The first option is Submission Type. I'm happy with the submission type of Ajax. If you're unsure, just leave it on this. And now I have to set the Actions. This is a multi-select option, so you can add as many options as you like here. There is Save to Database, Send to URL, MailChimp, HubSpot, and Open Off Canvas. There are a lot of ways forms can operate, and so of course you'll have to make your own choices here. You might want to save to database as well as submit it to a MailChimp or HubSpot account, or even open an off-canvas upon submission. It all depends on your needs. With each selection, further options may appear below. If I select Send to URL, for example, then I get a URL tab with further options for the URL details. For my example, I'm just going to set it to Save to Database. Now to the Appearance tab. And here I want to make some changes as I'm going to place this form on a purple background. I will change the field background color here to color 2, and the field text color, field label color, and the field placeholder color all to color 3. I'll also change the form border color on focus to color 3 as well. OK, that should be good. The next tab is notifications. This controls how you actually get the messages from the form. Here you can add multiple notifications for your form as your needs dictate. 
These could be full form submissions directly to your email, and they could also be auto replies to the user, or notifications to specific team members, etc. You can set up as many notifications as you want, and you can also use placeholders in the fields to add content. For this example, I want to start with a notification to myself that includes the full email submission, including any attachments. So let's edit the existing blank notification. I'll add a label here and call it email submission. Now I'll add an email address for it to be sent to in the email option. Let's say info at avadapodcast.com. You can also send the email to a coworker or anyone else here with both CC and BCC options. For the email subject, I'll just leave that empty as it then uses the form title, which is guest contributor, and that's fine. I'll leave encode email subject at no, and for the email from name, I will use a placeholder of first name, last name. This pulls from my first name and last name field names. For the sender email, I will set that as forms at avadapodcast.com. It's good to use an email address from the same domain here. And for the reply to email, I will add a placeholder corresponding to the email address field name. I'll select yes for the attach uploaded files as I have an attachment field in this email. And then there is the last option, email message. As the description says, you can leave this empty to get the default message with all form fields. And that will be just fine here. Okay, so there's my first email notification. Let's make one more quick one. This will be an auto reply for the user. I'll call this one auto reply. For the email address, I will use the email placeholder. For the subject, I will add your submission was received. I will leave encode email subject at no. And for the email from name, I will put Avada Podcasts. I'll add info at avadapodcasts.com as the sender email, as well as the reply email address. I'll set attach uploaded files to yes, so they can see the file went with the email. And I'll add a bit of a message in the email message field here with the All Fields tag at the bottom to display their full original message. If you want, you can even add your logo to display in the email. Okay, so that's my auto reply, so the user knows the email went through. Let's move on. The next tab is Confirmation, and I will leave this on Display Message, as I've already added the notice element into the form. Alternatively, you can select Redirect to URL, which you can use to redirect the user to another page, like a thank you page, or just back to the home page, etc. The next tab is Step Progress, which is for multi-step forms. See the link video on how to make those. Following this is the Privacy tab. You can store the IP and user agent, but as it mentions in the description, depending on the privacy legislation that applies to you, you might need to leave this disabled. There is a Duration of Submissions log option, and a Submission Expiration Action option, which controls what will happen when the time defined above comes to pass. For this form, I don't need any of those options, so let's move on. There are also custom CSS and import-export tabs, but again, I don't need these for this form. Okay, nearly done. I might just make one small change here to the actual container holding this form. If I edit the container, I might set the column spacing to 20 pixels to bring these columns a little closer together. Yeah, that's it. Now it's time to save all this work. And so now I'll go back to my guest page and I will edit this page so I can add the form. I've already changed the link on this button to scroll down the page to where my form will be, and I've also added a full width column directly under these half columns. I've added a menu anchor element so the button scrolls to this spot on the page, and I've then added a title element under that. Okay, so now I'm ready to add the Avada form element. I'll just add it here, and select my desired form from the drop-down list. The form loads, and yeah, that looks really good. Let's just save that page, and now let's check it on the front end. Okay, I'll just click my Become a Guest Contributor button here, and it scrolls down to the new form. And there it is. Custom, functional, awesome. That's the Avada Form Builder. Make sure to check out the linked Avada Forms playlist for all the other videos on Avada Forms, like how to make multi-step forms, and how to use conditional logic in Avada Forms. Okay, this concludes our video on how to use Avada Forms. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.